Gus, where the hell are you? It's time to do the, the fighting show. You, we're still doing it? I thought you're not doing the reviews anymore. God, you're always busting my balls, Gus. I'm sorry I'm not doing the reviews, all right? I still want to talk about Fargo. It's this great show. You still, I don't know if anybody's going to watch it Get anymore. in here, wherever you are. Where are you? Okay, give me like 10 minutes. <laughs> Hi. There sorry. you are. Sorry, oh, wow. At least you were mic'd up for our phone conversation. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it's time for Polite Fight. We're going to talk a little about Fargo. And yes, I'm not doing the reviews anymore. I actually cried about that, oh, Gus. No. Yeah, it was an emotional thing for me. But I'm, I'm editor-in-chief, my job's busy, and I've been looking forward to writing about Fargo all year. So thank God we have Polite Fight, where we can chat about, about it. it yeah. And But I'm glad Zach was able to take over. I know he's going to do a great job on those reviews. And in fact, let's kick off with a comment from mm -hmm. uh, this week's review, right? Yeah, so we had... Uh... Pray for Mojo made the very good observation, I thought, that this season's relying a lot on uh, people pulling out their weapons to create tension, mm. whereas last season, when a weapon was pulled, it was usually used like immediately. You would see the effect of that immediately, uh, which I thought Especially was, in this episode. Yeah. That's a great observation. Pray for Mojo. And I, but I think it really speaks to, um, it speaks to the era. I just feel like it's an era that is not, where violence is not as much a part of the fabric of society yet. No, well, you might be right, but I did think that in this episode it went a little too far. We we have two standoff scenes almost right after another, and I uh, I don't know. What do you think about this? Do you think they were too similar? No, I didn't, and I know by your question that you clearly do. Yeah, a little right? bit. Yeah. So okay. So let's let's pull these two up. Blue has a different color value here right. on the screen than uh, really everybody else. Yeah, Floyd right. has this bold red, and all the Gerhardt guys have this blue. blue, and it isolates Lou, but it kind of connects him to Floyd, and it makes mm. it seem like these two are the real operators here, mm -hmm. and everybody else is just kind of noise. Uh, uh, yeah, I like. I think that's a great observation that it sort of I agree. makes them the two. But let's look at how this plays out, how this actual standoff plays out when Dodd gets in here so that we can compare it later. Okay. Going shot, reverse shot between them. It's mm -hmm. building up this tension as more and more people are coming into the frame. Lou's more and more beset on all sides. But he does get Dodd to blink. Dodd's the one who walks away and leaves this. Ben gives him that pat on the shoulder there at the end of this standoff, mm -hmm. which is such a nice gesture because I think it says two things. One, it says, okay, you're done. Don't push your luck mm -hmm. any further, right? And two, it's like, hey, good job. We made it out of here without any you know, anybody dying. Right. Oh, so is the next standoff right so after? So it's right after. And to me, that's a little bit, it's, it's just like a little bit like we kind of just did this. Again, it starts with Lou and Ben driving up to somewhere, the camera mounted on the hood. And I guess my, my question is like, is the similarity intentional? I think the fact that they are one after the other almost makes them a matched set. Right. Uh, I, I agree, but to me, it, it's just a little more... Uh, your question is, what do we get out of having the second one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Let me make so the case for this one then. Okay, okay. okay. So, A... It brings in Mike Milligan, which I know you hate Mike Mulligan, it's Milligan not a true. lot, it's not true. so much, uh, but I'm, we're going to move past that for now. See, you're bad at it. You're just tapping all oh over. My God. But what I like about this standoff is that I think it reveals to Lou the extent of madness, sort of tangling madness that's going on here in the person of Mike Milligan. Mike Milligan comes out and goes, hi, how you doing? Waves to him. And that, I think is what really unsettles Lou. Okay, that's in that's interesting. Uh, let's... That's, you couldn't sound more condescending as you say that. I, cu I certainly could. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. That's interesting, John. That, to me, it's still a little too much of... Because you're looking at it in terms standoff. of Lou. I mean, this is just what you were yes. saying earlier, right? Lou reacts in a similar way both times, but... Um, with similar results, I'll admit, again, you too. Can see right? that you can see there, again, he's framed, like, stuck in between all these guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now you've got, last time you noted Ben padding right. Lou, here we've got Mike padding one of the Kitchen Brothers. To stand and again, down. 
that's how you see that the scene is over. So I think now I'm convinced that these two are so similar for a reason. They're supposed to echo each other. Yeah. Right. Okay. It heightens the contrast between these different angles of mm -hmm. the of the case. So the standoffs are supposed, to me supposed to be like big moments of tension for the mm -hmm. episode. But to me, the tensest moment was in the salon, mm -hmm. which is this house of horrors for Peggy. And I'll tell you why, because she has this little sort of outcropping of the Waffle Hut case, right? Um, but the salon is where people go to gossip, where they go to mm -hmm. share information. What I love about the way they shoot this is they really do play up the House of Horrors aspect for Peggy because there's mirrors everywhere. Yeah, the very ornate mirrors. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's faces everywhere sort of looking at looking, you. Looking, and it just gives this feeling that everything is being mm -hmm. seen from every angle, which is the worst possible outcome for Peggy, right, right. right? Peggy's boss now is the one person who could take Betsy's theory and connect it with Peggy because she's heard the theory that it's a hit and run and she's seen Peggy's car be all messed up and known that there's something wrong with it. Last week we talked about um, the that point of view shot when she's kind of looking Peggy up and down and looking mm -hmm. at Peggy's ass in that one scene, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think this is a character where they get so much accomplished with those glances because after uh, Betsy tosses out her little theory, mm -hmm. we just, just see Constance puffing on her cigarette momentarily, and that glance says it all. That glance is the pivotal shot of the scene because it lays out what uh, lays ahead for, mm -hmm. for Peggy, I think. I think that's it for today, right? Do we yeah. have any other commenters we wanted to call there out was, before we... Yeah, there was one other, uh, Nads Dickelson. Uh... <laughs> Nads Dickelson? Brilliant. Okay. He's already winning with me. Notice that um, Malvo and the deer oh, last season great. sort of reminded him of Ohansi uh, and the rabbit at the beginning of this episode. I thought that was a great connection. In what respect? Yeah. They respect and have a sort of special relationship with animals, and especially animals that they have killed or will kill. And I, it really makes it really makes me excited to see more from this character. I think that they set you up to pay a little bit more attention to him with that flashback in this episode. So I'm really I think that he is gonna be more than just the sort of the Gerhardt's sort of hired help in the long run. He's one of those those characters like Constance who is just you're getting access to them a little bit in subtle ways that's prepping us to pay more attention even though they haven't become sort of major players. He reminds me of Malvo in the sense that they both have this elemental feel to them, mm -hmm. right? And I think that the, the animals do feed into that. And I did not notice that until Nad Dickelson pointed it out to me. Um, yeah, I think that's it for this week. Okay, great. Well, thanks for your comments. And they really, especially Pray for Mojo, really fueled the discussion this week. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Thank you for watching Polite Fight. For Gus Spellman, I'm John Tatey. Let's wave to the folks. Bye. Bye. That was a terrible wave, Gus. Ha <laughs> ha